Mod Hotep family. This is Michael M. Hotep, host of the African History Network show and co-host of the Per Ankh Hour Questions and Answers show with Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, also known as Booker T. Coleman. I want to let you know that the African History Network lecture series and Urban Gorillas production presents the Meeting of the Master Teachers Conference 2014. This is taking place Friday, February 28th through Sunday, March 2nd in Detroit, Michigan. We're going to do live web streaming so you can watch this around the world. Featured at this conference will be Ahati Kalindi E, Grand Master of African Martial Arts, Brother Marduk Bell, founder of the Temple of Knowledge 720 Degrees, and also from Chicago, Brother Robert X, lecturer and researcher. This is going to be a fantastic conference. I will deal with understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Kalindi E will deal with DMT and the Tree of Life, the Akashic Records. Brother Marduk Bell will present on Kemet, Science, and the Medrunetter, also known as the Hieroglyphics. And Brother Robert X, who is speaking on all three days, will present on day one, Metaphysical Origins of the Dogon and Kemet. Day two, Metaphysics of Hollywood, Superman, Thor, and Elysium. And day three, Google, Rise of the Machines. This presentation is taking place at the new 5E Gallery located at 4605 Cass Avenue in Detroit, Michigan. Right at the corner of Cass and Forest Street, right behind the church that sits on the corner. Enter in through the Forest Street entrance through the red door. Tickets are $25 for the entire weekend or $10 per day. And we will be doing live streaming as well at Town Zone TV. For more information, please visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Friday, the event is from 6 p.m. to midnight. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Sunday, 12 noon to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the 5E Gallery. For more information, you can give us a call 313-462-0003, 313-462-0003, or call 313-471-1192, 313-471-1192. Also visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com for all the details. And vendor space is available as well. Remember, Friday, February 28th through Sunday, March 2nd, 2014, the meeting of the Master Teachers Conference is taking place at the new 5E Gallery. We hope to see you there. Mod Hotep, and remember, right knowledge corrects wrong behavior. All right, welcome back to the African History Network show. Uh, I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep, and we're moving into our third hour. And in our third hour, we're going to be joined by, uh, we have Brother Robert X, who is going to talk about metaphysics, the Dogon, ancient Kemet, and Hollywood. And Brother Robert X is uh, our featured presenter at the meeting of the master teachers coming up Friday, February 21st through, I'm sorry, fr Friday, February 28th through um, Sunday, March 2nd in Detroit, Michigan at the new 5E Gallery located at 4605 Cass Avenue uh, in Detroit, Michigan. Visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com uh, for more information, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. So we want to welcome back to the African History Network show, Brother Robert X. Hotel, brother, how you doing tonight? Hotel, brother Mike, how you feel, man? Oh, I'm all right, brother. Just tired, man. I'm about to, about to head to Chicago in the morning, brother. <laughs> I'm about to head to your yes, town. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I have every intention on on being there tomorrow night when you when you get ready to throw down, brother. I'll be there. Oh yeah, yes, yes, brother. I'm gonna. It's gonna. It's it's, it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be good. I dispel a lot of myths too, man, in our history, man. Some things that people don't want to uh, come to the realization of. But hey, you know, you don't have to take. You don't have to believe a word I say. You go do your own research. So. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. You know, I encourage that, brother, uh, all the time. Absolutely. Uh, never take our words and never settle for the research that we do. Uh, go and do uh, extra research on your own. Uh, even uh, right. we may lay out, as you know, I may lay out all kind of documentation, uh, but mm -hmm. I don't have all of the documentation. 
And so it becomes right. important for us to create the template, but then other people to go in and stretch the knowledge as far as they possibly can. Absolutely, absolutely, man. And, and, and you know, you know, Brother Copper Kamene, also known as Booker T. Coleman, one of my teachers, he talks about how to understand the existence of something, you have to first understand the pre-existence of existence. So this is why, you know, the presentation that I'm doing tomorrow night in Chicago, I tell people you, you first have to study the history of Black History Month or African American History Month to understand what it is and who, why, why it was created and what we need to do to make it relevant for the day in the future. If you don't understand the history of it, you don't know what to do, and this is what's going on. So, hey, well, brother, I'm, everybody's looking forward to your presentations coming up uh, at the meeting of the Master Teachers in Detroit. Friday, February 28th through uh, March 2nd. You know, you're going to deal with uh, metaphysical origins of the Dogon and Kemet, metaphysics of Hollywood, Superman, Thor, and Elysium, and Google Rise of the Machines. So um, give us, you know, you and I talked a couple hours ago, brother, and um, um, give people an overview of some of the things that you're going to talk about uh, at this over this uh, three-day lecture series. Yes, sir. Well, you know, first, brother, let me thank you and brother Malik for hosting me uh, out there yes, uh, in Detroit. Too. Yeah, Malik Muhammad, which mm -hmm. I pretty much consider my second home, uh, and have been since the '90s. I've been going back and forth to Detroit, uh, so you know, I have a relationship with the people there, no matter what the economic climate, uh, wherever wherever African people uh, exist, uh, I belong there personally, and so. Uh, I understand everything that's going on in Detroit uh, from mm -hmm. a uh, financial and uh, socio-political uh, perspective. Uh, but what I try to do, brother, uh, through the research, spiritual, metaphysical look at why things are the way that they are. And one of the things, uh, and I think that anybody that comes out uh, for those three days, I guarantee you, uh, if you hear anything that I talk about that you've heard anywhere else before in terms of these presentations, I want you to call Mark, Michael M. Hotep and say, man, I heard that stuff before. Uh, you, right. I guarantee you the things that we're going to drop, brother, are going to be right. absolutely mind-blowing, and I'll tell you why. Because they line up with many of the things that are going on today. For instance, Elysium. Uh, which talks about a two-tier society. Uh, Elysium has a Greek origin in terms of, of uh, what the word means. It deals with the elite living in a fake uh, paradigm uh, that they consider to be heaven where no one dies, okay? But only the select few are able to go there. Ingrained in Elysium uh, is this whole concept that we find ourselves in today with the 1% versus the 99%. And so Elysium is going to give you and does give you a bird's eye view of where we are heading in terms of societal structures uh, in the world of tomorrow, which is today. Thor, uh, with the only black man in the movie uh, right. being the guardian the rainbow bridge, if you will, uh, which basically is the pathway to the nine realms, which just happens to coincide with ancient Kemetan uh, thought as well in terms of the nine netters, okay? So we can see our history throughout all of these movies, and we're going to lay this out and show everybody that Superman, the man of steel, is really the mystery of speech in Dogon symbology. The first black god on the planet being a black female. And it's really, brother, this stuff is so deep that we see quantum physics being illustrated in Dogon symbology. We see the uh, biological makeup of the female being a part of Dogon's symbolic construct. We're aware of the star Sirius, Sophia yes. being Sirius A, but we 
need to understand clearly that Sophia is another name for our set. Okay? And that when we mm, study the okay. history of the Dogon, yes. yes, when we study the history of the Dogon, we find them migrating from ancient Kemet to escape right. the hordes of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. So they could maintain 5,000-year history of, of, of unbroken uh, historical context where the white people today, who are not only uh, bringing war to Mali to demolish these things, okay, that's why you, you yeah. see the war. It's not just for the gold reserves that are infinite, infinite one square block of gold dug up in Mali by Rothschild combines, a uh, one square block equal to the entire output of some countries, one square block. Mm. So now you can see why the French Rothschilds are in Mali creating all kind of habit. Uh, right. These things are so deep, brother, uh, we're going to show people that the Rainbow Bridge, that the Brothers Garden in Thor, is really dealing with Solomon's Temple, which is another name for Jacob's Ladder, which really deals what? with the seven chakras, okay? And that the story that we've had, that we've been given based on Pentateuch, which is basically a, a composite of stories taken by our group of people and changed from African Kemetan history to what we know today as Hebrew history. And we document all these things to show the people that many of these characters that you see that have been anglicized or Jewishized, if you will, in fact had their origin in ancient Kemet. And we see right. these things throughout exactly. the movies, brother, throughout the movies, mm -hmm. up to and including this latest revelation having to do with Detroit, as a matter of fact. So metaphysically speaking, I need to be in Detroit because that's where RoboCop okay. is being introduced. And Google, uh, by way of its acquisition of almost every major robotics firm in the country, is in fact being compared to, and are you ready for this, Brother Mike? Yes. Google is being compared to Skynet from the Matrix. Mm. I'm sorry, not the Matrix, from the Terminator. Where Skynet okay. was the robotic system uh, in the rise of the machines where the white woman came from the future to, in fact, uh, institute the operation of Skynet, where the machines began to take over. This thing is so insidious, brother, that almost every appliance, every article having an electronics base, period, of which most of the appliances in your home, your stove, your refrigerator, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, all the way down to your printer, if you have a printer, all of these things are going to hook up through the smart meters that they're putting on everybody's homes uh, yeah. to allow Google to monitor every single thing that you do. That process is being implemented through a cloud-based system that the robots will be able to access singularly with another cloud-based system that's going to allow the smart meters to operate unilaterally, where we will begin to see, brother, robots not only begin to have sex with themselves and reproduce themselves, but also be able to have sex with human beings and create offspring. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Um, I know that... Um, a couple of years ago when you did a presentation and you were talking about some of the robotics from Boston Dynamics, like Big Dog and Hellcat, things like that. Right. Um, um, time time 
uh, Life Books had a, um, I think I have it here at home. They had a, um, um, a, a they do these. They do these big, big full-color booklets, like once a month, once every two months, on a different mm -hmm. subject. And they had one a few months ago dealing with uh, robotics and how robots are in all different aspects of our life, things like this. But in that booklet, they had Hellcat in there. They had Big Dog. They had uh, uh, Pet Man. They showed all this and said it's from Boston Dynamics, things like this, right? And I said, well, I, found, I first found out about it, man, from you like two years ago, brother. <laughs> so, well, now I found here's out. the deal, Mike. Boston ahead, Dynamics yeah. is one of the corporations that have been bought by Google. But mm -hmm. it's, much mm -hmm. more insidious, it's much more insidious than this, brother. We're talking about, and we see this happening right now in Boston, okay? We see driverless cars being used by police in New York. We see uh, transportation systems being fitted with not just the cameras on the transportation systems, but facial right. recognition systems being put on the outside of the buses and the inside. Thing. Let me put it like this. We see today, brother, that bankers are killing themselves the likes of which I haven't seen uh, in some years, and I've been monitoring CIA activity since 1981, okay? Okay. <laughs> Everything that I'm talking about here, dealing with the movies, dealing with the robots, all of these things fit into much of what is going on today such that the movies have become the template by which they prepare the people psychologically for what they're going to do, okay? Yes. Now, we just saw all of these bankers with ties to J.P. Morgan Chase and uh, the Deutsche Bank and to some degree, HSBC, these bankers are killing themselves under circumstances, for instance, where one banker, and, and by the way, they, in some cases, they're killing the, themselves one day after another. One gets killed one day, another one gets killed the next day, another one gets killed two days later, another one gets, all of them are connected to this derivative monster that will cause, and I said this is, I'm, I'm sorry, say that again? You, you, are you talking about the LIBOR scandal? That's part of it. That's part, LIBOR was only a system of cheating, okay? Mm -hmm. The derivative is a system of cheating, but the value of the derivatives are over a quadrillion dollars. That's far and away, uh, way more than the gross domestic product of all the economies on the planet combined. In other words, it cannot be paid back. Let me show you how all this stuff fits in. Okay. Many people's pension funds are a byproduct of the gambling that was taking place using the derivatives as poker chips. Now, Detroit files bankruptcy. Right. Immediately after the bankruptcy, the first thing they do is take people's pensions. Everybody around the country, get ready, because you are next. While that was going on, brother, a year before that, they instituted something in Greece called the bail-in. They quietly just introduced the bail-in in this country. Here's what that is. That allows the bank to take control of your money without any opposition. This is law now. Okay? Such that you see strict controls being put on how much of your money you can take out of the bank without just cause. You have to tell the bankers why you are taking your money out the bank, and they make the determination if you're going to get it or not. 
Yeah, you're, in the you're meantime, right, because I just saw an article about that. I just saw an article about that, like, in the last three weeks. I yeah. saw an article about that, but go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. But all of this is tied to the derivatives. Here's the other thing. The, the Federal Reserve had been giving the banks $85 billion a month, very quietly. Mm -hmm. Now, right. why yeah. was that yeah. happening? No, West talked about that. Yep. That's yeah. right. Now, here's why that was happening. Because based on the banking law under Basel III that came from the Bank of International Settlements, uh, instituted by Paul Volcker, which we did the Volcker Rules, uh, but at the same time, you had his co-criminal, Stanley Fisher, who was just named as the co-head or deputy head of the Federal Reserve under Yellen. Put Both of them put there by a boo, boo okay? Now, Say that again, you were breaking up a little bit. Say that again, brother, you were breaking up a little bit. Stanley Fisher, who was Paul Volcker's deputy at the Bank of International Settlements, which governs the behavior of all of the central banks on the planet, Federal Reserve included. It's subordinate to the Bank of International Settlements. Volcker came with something called the Volcker Rules, which required a certain amount of liquidity, that's cash on hand, for banks to be determined stable. Okay? That $85 okay. Billion a month was creating and providing the stability of the banks to pay the pensions for the people whose money are really tied up in the derivatives, which is all fake. If they, do, if they are not able to pay the pensioners they pension, then the banks will be exposed to being zombie banks. So it's important for them to take people's pensions. You follow me? Because mm. they can't pay it, it out because they don't have the liquidity. And you know, in Detroit, we've been saying that Detroit is a, is a pilot program for this because if they succeed in Detroit with taking the pensions, backing out of the pensions, then you're going to see this across the country. They okay. have to see so, mm. They have to see my brother. That's mm. the point. The bail-in is already yeah. in place. They can take your money anytime they get ready. But there's major investigations. And many of these bankers who were in charge of, of much of this stuff have found themselves dead. These are bankers at the high levels in these major, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, and uh, the Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank or J.B. Morgan Chase goes under. Case closed. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to reset the entire economic system. Much of what you see going on in Ukraine. See, I'm going to geopolitics now from dealing with all the other okay. things because all of these things are interconnected. Right. You see what's going on in Ukraine right now. Is to deny yeah, Russia, yes, mm -hmm. well, it's actually fake revolt, just like Egypt, Libya, using NGOs, non-governmental organizations, financed through the State Department to give fake uh, riots and then overthrow the government. They're trying to pay back Putin for coming to the aid of Syria because the Russia's main ports, are in two places, Syria and Ukraine. So, okay, so Russia's oh, docking ahead. stations for their navy, for their movement of their goods, their oil, and major pipeline, the major pipeline to move Russian gas is in Ukraine. So playing geopolitical chess to destabilize that government to punish Putin, okay, for supporting Syria after uh, Bandar Bush, the head of Saudi intelligence, 
went to Russia back last year, late last year, and told him, if you do not support the Syrians, we'll give you carte blanche to push all of your gas in Europe. Okay? Russia balked. And what uh, Bandar Bush told her was, we're going to disrupt the Sochi Olympics. The Sochi Olympics have security of the yang. So what did they do? They went next door to form a fake revolution using NGOs, non-governmental organizations, of which the National Governors Association, who are in fact the authors of the new educational system being pushed globally, you see all these things connected? It's in fact an NGO, a non-governmental organization. So they're using NGOs, foundations, of which the George Soros Foundation, the Agency for International Development um, uh, and other uh, foundations are being used to form a revolution. And so I hope, brother, that I have the time to expound on all of these things to show people not just the physical realm in terms of what we just got through discussing, but the metaphysical realm.